Can we find Sonia? Hi, Jan. Hi. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm really excited to talk to you about your books. I'm excited to tell you about them. <laughs> I read a little bit of your background and you write historical fantasy, correct? That's right. Yes, yes. And children's books, but mostly historical fantasy at present. Okay. Well, jump in and tell me about them. Uh, well, I have, a, it's a series. It takes place in the Tudor age, which is a really interesting century of change, upheaval, uh, kings, queens, lots of, lots of things going on for the common man. Um, and that is woven into my, the fantastical side, where I've got two main characters, Aoife and Joshua, who are fae, winged fae, not fae as in the, the more possibly traditional um, elvish type fae. These are a proper magical fae as well. Uh, and they partly live in their own world in Nature, which is what the series is named after, the Nature series. Uh, and they also live in the real world, well, the 15th, 16th century real world, that is. So they have to try and kind of pass themselves off as human, which is a bit difficult when you have wings. I was going to say, so. that was my first question. <laughs> like, I guess yeah. they wear cloaks and things to hide their wings. Lots, there's lots of cloaks and slightly uncomfortable corsets and <laughs> things like that. But yeah, it, it, is a, it is a challenge. But I kind of like to think about they just sort of disappear into their backs somehow. Not, not, not really specifically mentioned how, but, you know, yeah, they just fold over themselves, perhaps, like a like an insect folds over, like a, um, a ladybird. Right. So that's so interesting that you have winged fae, because I also have winged fae in my ah. fantasy series. And I didn't know that people mostly don't have winged fae when I wrote. And so then I was Me like, neither. well, they have wings. I so... Yeah, exactly. I thought Faye or Faye had wings. And it was only when I started reading some other people's stuff, having already started writing my books, I was like, oh, they don't have wings. Hmm. But they're fairies. They're Faye. Faye have wings. So it carried on like that. I yeah, like wings. Nobody got mad at me. So I was happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So, yeah, my Faye also come. I don't really have much of a storyline yet in having them in our realm they mostly stay in their um fey I think realm that would make is... life easier that would right, make life easier right. if there was there was nothing different about them there was nothing odd and strange but uh yeah in my world they, they have to mix with humans and uh there's also some other creatures we've got um vampires witches and uh, demons spelt with an a demons demons okay. um but the demons are more they're not demons as in hell demons, they're extraordinary people, shall we say. They okay. are the, um, the people that, for me, stand out. So they might be somebody that's like a genius or somebody that is on the autistic spectrum or somebody who just has that special something about them that makes them unique. And that's, that's my demons. They're, they're actually more human than they are, than they are demon. But I'm okay, so, and, but they're not evil. Then I'm guessing. No, 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 no. They're not. They're not bad. Um, none of my none of my creatures are bad per se. Not even the the vampires, which you might think would be leaning that way, but really, there's a kind of reason for them behaving the way that they do, which might upset people, I suppose, if you were very, very strongly religious, because the vampires in my world are very, very strongly allied to the Catholic Church. Oh, interesting. Which is important because of the time period, because there was this conflict going on through the century between Catholics and the rise of Protestantism. So that's why I have to kind of have these two sides, if you like. Um, and the, it seems to fit much better. The Catholics have, um, have a long history of bloodletting. I don't know if you know that. Uh, so, yeah, that seemed like a perfect excuse for them to be allied with the Catholic Church to vampires. That makes perfect sense to me as well. <laughs> Thank you. It made sense to me. So I know the uh, Catholic. I'm it. not offended. So <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I really do. <laughs> it's nice to know. <laughs> yeah, I'm obsessed with that time period as well. I watched that show. Have you seen the show Rain from? Oh uh, yeah, Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah, Mary Queen of Scots. Yes, and then um, there was another one that Tudors? was 
the tutors yes yeah with yeah so um but it's funny i really loved that when it first came out and i tried to go back and watch it and i couldn't like i don't know what? the setting or something i don't the setting looked fake and unreal the second time i tried to watch it which is weird you know I that's know. funny I, I thought that as well actually that was really bizarre to hear someone else say it because i watched it again i watched it years and years ago when it came out watched it a few times since and then when I was writing this I thought I sometimes you just need to kind of get into the mood and the history of it um and of course the Tudors the tv series kind of compresses events obviously for dramatic purposes and it slightly bends the truth on a few occasions <laughs> but you know we'll, we'll run with that but just to get a feel for the settings and it suddenly seemed to me to be incredibly gaudy and like kind of vibrant sort of made for tv bright red and, and you know what? I, I don't think it was actually that bright. I think it was a bit grimier, to be quite honest with you. That's how I would have pictured it, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. I don't think they had the same washing technology that we had. No, scrubbing it on a rock on the, you know, on the in the river, probably not so much. No. Okay. But to get back to your Fay, you have Sorry. two Fay. And hmm. what is their challenge? Okay. Well, we start off in book one um of the series where they're trying to live in hiding not quite sure why uh, although it does start with a, the, a, a birth scene if you like uh, joshua is reborn as a fae and you don't really kind of understand why uh, until later but then you see how they try and live their lives just they just want to be together that's all they want to do is have a normal life live peaceably hidden but it doesn't work. They um, they get chased out of towns all the time. Something happens and they get the blame because they're a bit weird and they're a bit, you know, not normal. Um, and they stand out. They can't help it. They, they're, they're two beautiful people that, that attract attention without wanting to. Um, so they the story starts by them uh, trying to live this normal life and they settle down in a nice little town in the northeast and then it all goes horribly wrong and they're ripped apart in quite a horrible scene um and Aoife well Annabella is, as we know her at the, at the time is um kidnapped she's taken away Joshua's left there with a, a dead body to explain away and um it, it's you know they're, they're ripped apart they're soulmates that have been ripped apart so the story is essentially the journey that they go through to try and be reunited except that Aoife has a hidden destiny. She is actually destined for something more than an ordinary life passing off her as a human. Joshua has no idea about this destiny, none whatsoever, no clue. He just knows he has to find her. He really, it's, it's his love, it's his true love. So he has to go all the way traveling through England, Scotland, uh, encountering various problems on the way um he falls in with a, a priest that's perhaps not quite what he seems um to try and reach her and then she's obviously undergoing massive challenges where she is um which is back on nature i don't want to tell you too much more because it no don't give too much away um, essentially it's a journey for both of them and they have to try and be reunited um that, that's their quest if you like and it is so, told from both of their voices or is it yeah, a it third is. person? Yeah, it's dual, dual point of view. Okay. Um, so you, you really get to kind of feel what each of the characters is going through in these very, very different scenarios uh, that that they face and their challenges that they have to overcome in order, <laughs> in order to reach the end of the story and their character arc. Uh, and then book two uh, continues with that story. It kind of picks up actually 30 years later but it doesn't feel like that um so book two which is launching at the end of february picks up from there and the challenges that they've got to try and face moving forward and um yeah there's there's a, a there's a pretty big dark threat on the horizon but they don't really realize it and they struggle to cope with what they're dealing with right now um the very different situations that they've found themselves in on nature a and they struggle. It's it's a mature relationship as it would be after a century or two, um, but it it talks about the challenges of maintaining a mature relationship. To be quite honest with you, so it's not it's not really a romance in that sense. There's no 
there is happy ever afters, but it's not boy meets girl happy ever after. It's uh, it's about couples coming together. Nice. Overcoming any challenges that are thrown to them and perhaps not overcoming some of the challenges that are coming to them as well. So yeah. do they live forever or? Yeah, my fae are eternal as are my vampires. Um, witches just live a very long, unnaturally long lifespan and demons live a pretty much a human lifespan, possibly shortened because of they have a tendency to go crazy. Um, so. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah, my fae live a shortened lifespan in their own realm, but if they come to earth, they live like 900 years, just like ah. my, yeah. So it like their time is off in their realm. Um, and then my vampires are not immortal and not, but they live a very long time. So they're very healthy yeah. people because they've just evolved people in my world. And yeah, then, yeah, which no, is, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So witches are the same. They live like 900 years or something like that. So that's oh. um, a little bit similar to in those worlds. Yeah. I think it's fun to play around with fantasy. That's a vampire fantasy that starts um, around the late 1400s, but I don't go into like the history of that. Her, right. um, her parents are burned by witches and she escapes with the handmaid um, that takes care of her, who is also a vampire and mm -hmm. they escape to England from France. But then she, and they, they blend into the human world because they basically look like humans and they grow up until they're 18, the vampires do. And then they kind of are frozen from that point. Um, but then she meets another vampire and falls in love, but then he's murdered. And so she has a quest to go find his murderer. And yeah, um, it's more, it's and, and it takes you all the way to like the year 2000. So it's, it's a little hmm. epic in that manner. So that's my, that, that is a big time scale to cover. I thought a century was pretty hard. <laughs> right. Well, it does skip, it does skip some, like, yeah. you know, we skip ahead yeah. a little bit. <laughs> that would be like, I don't know, so many pages if you didn't skip ahead. <laughs> I've got a challenge. I'm uh, I'm looking at uh, co-authoring a story, and uh, it covers about a twenty-year span. Um, I can't say too much about it because it's still in the kind of paperwork stages. But we're already talking about how can you jump from like this point to five years later without going five years later. She found herself. Didn't it? <laughs> it's just like oh, okay, well, we do that subtly, but it, it needs must. You have to have to do that because things again tie into the. The history of what is going on at present so or at that moment and their present it's true that it's sounds like a minor project hopefully next time i talk to you you can tell me about that <laughs> yeah i'd love to i'd love to it's uh it's my first co-authoring opportunity should we say so uh I'm, I'm excited i'm really excited actually very Good. cool and tell me how did you get into writing did you always want to be an author um it was one of those things where I, I probably should say, yes, I always wanted to be an author, but I, I truly had never even considered it. Um, I started my sort of late teens, early 20s degree doing uh, script writing and plays and things for a drama degree. And then just went into the world of work and I did a lot of writing actually, and it never really kind of occurred to me. It was just part of work that you write things, proposals, handbooks, guidebooks, marketing materials, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it wasn't until after I had a, a career break from having children and I was looking at, well, do I go back to work, which at the time wasn't actually very feasible for us as a family, or do I try and do something else? And a friend of mine contacted me from America. He's a film producer and said, hey, Jan, you um, you used to write things. I'm like, yeah. And he goes, I really need someone I know and trust to do something really cool with this. I was like, OK. And um, so he he's had the option on some uh, fantasy short stories and asked me to adapt them because I've done adaptations at university and he, he you know, we'd, we'd bounced ideas and stuff like that off each other. So he wanted me to do that adaptation, which I did. So that was um, then sent out as around as a spec script. And then I kind of thought, do you know what? This is what I'm missing. This is what I enjoyed about work. I can do, I, I, I do part-time business consultancy anyway, along with bits and bobs of other things, but 
what I enjoyed about work was actually the writing. So why don't I just write? Kind of, it was one of those kind of dope moments. And you just think, why did I not think of that before? <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious. Why did I not think of it before? That's what I like to do. It makes me happy. Why not do it? So yeah, so then I started, um, at the time I was doing a lot of work with uh, children in our local school. I was doing a, um, a lot of work volunteering, reading with children. And some ideas came to me from, from that experience of a for a children's series that I kind of thought needed to be written. There was a gap in the market. There still is a gap in the market. Um, and so I started writing that children's series, Mitch and Mooch Try, uh, which is a series of picture books, actually, uh, about first experiences. And unfortunately, um, just as I was getting ready to kind of well, it was all geared up to, to launch, et cetera. The book, uh, book one is about swimming lessons. Fantastic, due to launch at the end of March. And we locked down on the 23rd of March in England. <laughs> and so nobody was going swimming. There was no bookshops. There was nothing. Children weren't in school. It was, oh, I was like, yeah, that could have gone better. Um, and unfortunately, I'm in the situation where with, my the, the second in the children's books the illustrator for it has not been heard from for a while so um yeah midway through the project so yeah so while I was doing all of that I thought oh I'll just start writing a novel so <laughs> I did very and then cool. I wrote another one and then I wrote another one and uh, yeah here we go and I did the the prequel Risking Destiny was written during NaNoWriMo just because I wanted to see if I could, really. And I could, it was, it was good. Uh, it was a fair amount of prep work beforehand and a fair amount of research because that one's in the Viking age. So not my natural go-to era. So I had to do a lot of learning. Oh dear, I had to watch a lot of Vikings on TV. <laughs> it was really hard. It was really hard. bad, wasn't it? <laughs> it was really difficult, yeah, really hard. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I had to read, read a lot around that subject and, and I did a lot of um, actual research as well because, uh, again, Nature is actually based off the Orkney Islands in Scotland and there's a really, really interesting history to that area in, of the UK. It's I find it really fascinating. So I'd already kind of got in the back burner my thoughts about that. Um, and so the, the prequel kind of just came together very, very quickly over NaNoWriMo, um, which was great. I enjoyed it. I'm not sure I'd do it again, though. It was really hard when you're trying to homeschool as well. It was really oh, hard. yes, that would be <laughs> challenging. Yeah, it was. But, um, you know, we did it. Good to have goals. Yes. <laughs> nobody died, right? <laughs> no, nobody died. Nobody nobody starved to death. Yes. Sort of. We all had toilet paper. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. We all had toilet paper. It was quite by fluke. <laughs> yes. Um, so is the prequel published as well? Yeah, the prequel is available. It's also available as a reader magnet if uh, if somebody would be interested to have it as a, an ebook download. But it's also on Amazon if anyone. Well, in fact, actually, you can get it anywhere. The prequel. You don't have to be an Amazon customer to, to read the prequel. Um, so if you like Viking love stories, uh, then yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good one to go for. But please don't blame me for the ending. Well, you kind of have to blame me for the ending, but yeah, don't hate me for the ending, I think yes. is, is where I'm going with that one. It's it's a satisfying ending, but it is quite sad. Oh. Mm. Are they the same characters in the prequel? Well, the prequel is actually the story of the villain. Oh. Um, so uh, while I was writing Disrupting Destiny, I realized that the villain was actually interesting enough that she really, really needed her story being told as because nobody's born bad, are they? They, they, they don't wake up and go, oh, I'm going to be bad today. <laughs> no, it, it just doesn't happen. So um, I, I really wanted to kind of tell her story and make people understand quite why she was the way that she she was in book one. So that was that was the reason for it. Um, and I think it does. I, add to the series as well because it sets out the the world how it was and then how it is in uh like you know 700 years later how it got to be the disaster that it is when we, when we meet it in book one that is really neat yeah 
the one of my the my historical fantasy with the vampires is a prequel yeah. to my oh, right. very urban fantasy series because it's telling the story of one of the main characters mothers so yeah. her, her, the mother is the one that her family is burned by the witches and then we find out that the witches that burn her home are the same witches that they're battling um yeah. in present day because um, they live for 900 years <laughs> right and um <laughs> actually one of the witches I go much further than that in the prequel to the prequel I have like a very short novella and she is the daughter of Lilith so that's ah, my life. all the yeah. way back to the Genesis story but yeah. I have to write in between because she's this um one witch who's kind of an evil witch like you said mm. you have why did she become evil and yeah. And she's carried through, I have another series, it's a crossover series with the Fae, the Fae one. Um, she's going to be a villain in that series too. Yeah. So at some point I have to go back and write her backstory of yeah. why she uh, becomes the way she becomes. So I'm, I'm in the same boat. I'm, I've, I've got on my, my to-do list for this year is actually I need to write the love story because when we meet our couple, um, they're already a couple. But oh right. How do, how do you get to that point? So I do need to write the love story as well. But it's fun, isn't it, when you write in one in one world and then you realize actually that that's that's interesting and people might, you know, you, you've got questions about how that happened. So you kind of create a universe around it. I love doing that. Yeah. Um, so well I done. have a question for you, which many authors will not answer, but I will see if you will answer. Oh. Do you have favorite characters? I do. Ooh. I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't. And I'm sure most authors, if they do ask it, or do answer it, would probably say their main characters because you have to love your main characters to write them. I think that's, that, that is important. Um, but my main characters can be kind of serious, which, you know, they, they have their, their funny sides as well, but they're you know they're quite focused on completing their quest and that can be a little bit kind of like intense at times so I have to be honest with you I, I do have a couple of favorite side characters which are just fun uh, they're really fun to write um, one of them I found such fun to write that he had a much bigger role than intended in book two um, my, my, my demon character Fairfax who's just he's just <laughs> unpredictable I always kind of like half dread going into a scene where I'm thinking right okay so Fairfax is going to come in and do that and that's going to happen and he just goes completely off piste and I'm like no come back stop it oh no now look what you've done <laughs> just, he, he's like that and that but that's that's the chaotic nature of him he can't help it chaos just falls wherever he goes he can't help it it's just his nature so he is always fun to write because he's it's, it's kind of unexpected and he throws up some real big problems that I hadn't really kind of wanted my characters to have to face, but they now have to face the unintended consequences of his actions, which is just fun. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Me. Yeah. Well, I like that answer because a lot of times authors will say, well, the character I'm writing right now, because that's the way I'm, uh, that's what I'm thinking of most, right? So. Yeah. If you'd, if you'd asked me that probably about a month ago, when I was still, writing, <laughs> still finishing off book two, I possibly would have said that because book two has got a very morally grey character that by design was quite morally grey. And, and he goes on a journey of discovery, of self-discovery, because he's essentially been held captive, been made vampire, had a purpose. And then at the beginning of the story, his purpose is completely stripped away from him. He he genuinely is like a newborn. He has no idea who he is, what he can do. He's got no goal in mind. He doesn't know anyone anymore because he's been locked away. What does he do? So he has some really interesting kind of morally gray dilemmas. Does he do this? Does he do that? Um, and you, you just don't know which way he's going to go because I don't think he knows. So if you asked me that a month ago, I possibly would have said him, but now I'm kind of done with that book. I'm like, no. <laughs> No, I still like writing Fairfax. He yes. probably, I actually was thinking about doing a whole um, Kindle Bella uh, test and trying out that market because he seems to be the kind of character that possibly my, a younger audience would, would resonate with. And I, 
I sort of think that Kindle Vela is probably for a younger audience. I don't really know very much though. Have you done anything in that? I haven't. I was just talking to an author yesterday who dove into that world and learned a little bit about it, but yeah, not Mm -hmm. enough to dive. I don't know. Like I'm so set on my structure of how I've written. I don't know if I could release it every week or every month or something so I kind of think the way the way forward with that is to make sure that you have cliffhangers on the end of every single chapter but probably for for a lot of authors certainly I think for me I would want to have the whole structure kind of laid out know where it's going possibly even have most of it written and then you release it in a kind of set sequence of every week every week it's already, okay, up there. That it's already done it can be released that's fine I don't need to worry about it right you would have to finish for me I would feel most yeah, comfortable like finish finishing it first. the whole project <laughs> yeah. having it edited and then releasing chapters you're right yes so. yes I think that's the way, I, way forward I would I would want to go to but it's it's a different style as well to do that there's less character building I think you've got to go straight in for the action haven't you um, yes keep people definitely. keep keep that interest particularly at the beginning as well and more like a series tv show type yeah so. yeah a tele a telenovela is jane the virgin <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love to ask authors this question what do you want readers to experience when reading your book or take away from reading your book i personally when i read a book i like to escape I like to just immerse myself in that book and it just kind of happens a bit like a TV show in my head. Uh, I, I, I do write quite descriptively myself. I like to read that sort of, you know, so I can build a picture in my head of what it looks like. So when I write, it is for that purpose. It's because I want my readers to basically fall into the world and not, you know, just be able to shut out and just relax and just enjoy being in that world with the characters and experience what they go through. So it's quite um, immersive as I want it. I, don't, I, I like I like pacey books. I like books that you can't put down. And I, um, I'm hoping, or I think I've heard feedback says <laughs> that my books are quite like that. Once you kind of get into the story, that's it, you are, you are not going anywhere. So that was my intention. I hope it works. Nice. Yes. I love those books as well. Do you have favorite authors that you read? I I read a lot of anything and everything, not so much as I would like to read these days. Um, But yeah, when I, when I find an author, I kind of tend to binge read just them. Um, I'm kind of binge reading SJ Paris at present. Uh, I love everything historical, uh, nonfiction and fiction. Um, I'm a massive fan of thrillers. I I just love the the pacey nature. Um, I'll read all sorts from like old school literary things, Jane Austen and, you know, all all that stuff. (laughs) I read anything really. It's a bit of a fatal fatal addiction. But uh, yeah, I just wish I had more time these days to do it. That's my problem. Um, Although I think my husband would rather prefer that I now moved from paperbacks, which I personally prefer, onto kindle which you know would take up less bookshelf space because we really haven't got any more space for any more books <laughs> that's the problem and then i you don't want to give them up do you no, when you find I you've don't. got an author and you've got the whole series of things you don't want to, like, you don't want to give them up it's like i've got shelves and shelves of patricia cornwell and i'm like I, I just can't i can't give them to a charity shop because i might want to read the whole series again and again and, and um, I could admit something really bad. I have two copies of the whole Twilight series. <gasps> two copies. Is Someone gave them edition? to me, and I can't. Oh, I have the right. okay. I have the paperback and the hardback. Yeah, because some people I noticed this on like Book Talk and Instagram and things like that. Some people have like the ordinary copy, which they would annotate as well this is the thing I didn't know this but it was a thing to put like tabs on things for scenes they like or quotes Mm -hmm. or whatever um and then they have a special edition copy which is the one that kind of gets pride of place on a mantelpiece or on a bookshelf it's turned to face out so you can see the pretty cover and I'm thinking I just don't have the space for that my books are already (laughs) double stacked they're already like around in there well, they are hidden from my husband. I, I will tell you that. Oh, see, if you, husband, it would, you just wouldn't know. You'd just be like, Twilight, what? Yeah, <laughs> he'd think there are different books, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah. 
but I don't like the movie covers books. I like the original covers. Ah, yeah. that's interesting. You know how they, after the movies came out, they switched the covers to match the yeah, characters. Yeah, they've done that with the discovery of witches. And I'm kind of sad about that really, because I, I read, have you read the discover, a discovery of witches series? I haven't. I, it's oh. on my like Kindle. Oh it's yeah, no, no, no. Read it, read it. <laughs> it's one of those love them or hate them books. Personally, I love them. Um, there are. It's a series of there's three in the All Souls trilogy, but then there's two other books that kind of wrap around, uh, take place afterwards. They're not part of the, the trilogy because the trilogy is a complete story arc, so they're standalones, but with the same characters or follow-ons, um, and then there's a companion stuff as well. But yeah, she's she's just re-released them because season three is about to come out on Netflix. Ooh, ooh, today. No, not Netflix, <laughs> but Sky. <laughs> ooh, 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 I've got to watch that. Um, and so she's just re-released the whole lot with uh, new covers that have got the actors and actress faces on. Mm -hmm. I'm like, mm, ah, not sure about that. I quite like the old covers, actually. Even though they were really, really, really vague really vague uh, yeah give them a try give them a try yeah, yeah I will the witches they're witches and vampires and demons uh not fey okay but just witches vampires and demons um yeah circling back to the fey thing I was so glad that I didn't read any fey before I wrote my fey yeah. Yeah, because, likewise. Yeah, because then they're like supposed to be um, hurt by iron, which I don't have, and really? they they can't lie, which I don't have that either. So um, I'm calling no. the other Fay the Shimmer Fay. So oh, and, and so you do? Do you have them with all of those tropes in? No, but they're not no, your main characters. Just, all right. No, but okay. it's interesting because I was talking to uh, author who wrote these about these with these Fay and. Um, in her world the fey realm is above the human realm in mine it's below so actually we could do a crossover series where both of these fey realm exist but they're a little different creatures but how they get to their fey realm instead of fairy rings like in mine they get to them in these shimmers that they can enlarge and like it's like yeah. a portal you can go through portal yeah so. yeah and that, that's, that's got potential for it and there could be like a battleground in the middle uh, yes, <gasps> with the humans, right? Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to protect the humans? I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. Her fey well, maybe Maybe the humans have to be showing their resourcefulness. Yes. Her maybe. fey hate the humans because there was a war a long time ago, but my fey think they're, um, why they were made is to protect the humans from the evil souls of mm. the workers. So yeah yeah that that sounds fun definitely yes. got, got uh yeah i went to a really interesting i went to a conference in las vegas in november with a whole load of authors uh 20 books to conference and uh, i went to a really interesting uh talk by martha carr about multiverses so it sounds like that that could be a definite option for you to discover with that uh with that author um, I know I can't get it out of my head now and she's like I don't have mm. time I don't have time I'm like you need to give me time <laughs> but, yeah well, we'll see well it's mm. so great talking to you about your books give us yeah. the titles again so we can make sure we can find them as well as your website okay so disrupting destiny is book one that's out already anarchic destiny is book two that's out end of February uh and risking destiny is also available everywhere um and that is the prequel, and that's the Viking one. Uh, website is www.escapeintoatale.com. Okay. Obviously. No. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Please, uh, please check them out. Well, thank Great. you so and much. Yeah, every time I have a podcast, I love every book I hear about. And then I'm like, okay, I'm buying this book, and my Kindle is like <laughs> exploding. I bought, yeah, I think, I I bought three books today. Too. So, <laughs> well, that's uh, it's been so nice to talk to you thank you, you so much well, Tisha. and i, I can't wait to it. read your books yeah likewise <laughs> i'm on it now <laughs> well thank you again Another thank you bye bye